clues in the trash, huh? Huh. It's worth a try. Oh, man, that stinks. So, what have we got here? Ugh, trash bags with leftovers. Packaging, paper towels, and... Hey, some torn up pieces of paper. That really... Those are the paper snippets out of the trash can at the diner. Let's see if I can put them back together. Yeah, I think it's a letter from Fuller to Mrs. Biber. Maybe even the one I stuck in her hand yesterday? Dearest Claire, I'm a little disappointed that you don't come to visit me anymore. Don't you miss our time together at all? All the fun we had? Take a look at the pictures. You look so happy and contented. Don't you think so too? I tell you, that was some kind of fun we had, too. And you just can't bring yourself to admit it. Are you worried about it getting out? Well, it would be too embarrassing, wouldn't it? 
A married businesswoman has to watch her reputation. What would the folk say? What would your husband do with you? It would be a scandal. But I'll protect you from it. Me and 15 Ben Franklin stand between you and shame. I'll expect the, uh, bonus this evening. Bring it to me, and I'll enjoy myself in your pictures for a few more weeks. F. That's at least evidence that Fuller was blackmailing Mrs. Biber. Fifteen Ben Franklins is fifteen hundred bucks. But is that gonna be enough for the cops? They're gonna ask her what he was blackmailing her with. And if they ask her, Biber will deny everything. I've gotta find out what Fuller was using to blackmail her. And I'm sure that the answer is behind that secret door. Sorry, Mrs. Biber? So where was your husband last night? Yeah, and what's that got to do with you? What's that with him and Fuller? I'm asking you. This weird guy. Uh, the one who bumped into me yesterday. Have you seen him again? The guy from yesterday? Sure, I think I'd remember him. This guy. Oh, him. Nope. I haven't seen him again since he was in here questioning me. What did he want? He was asking after Miss uh, so-and-so. Miss Angelina Morgan? Could be. And you haven't seen him again? Nope. Will you tell me if you do? Maybe. So friendly. What's happened to your eye? Let me guess. You fell down the stairs. I... Yes. And your husband was standing at the bottom doing his boxing training. What's this got to do with you? I just don't understand it. H how often does this happen? Not often. Just sometimes. Maybe you ought to move to a bungalow without stairs. Yeah, you think you can give me advice? You married? You trade in your pride when you do that? You've never been in love. If you had, you'd never ask that. Okay, what do you want to drink? Is it too early for a whiskey? What do you think? Psst, Mrs. Biber. Yes, what can I get you? Haven't you heard what's happened to Fuller? Yes. But... I don't want to talk about it. Why not? You hated him. Maybe your life will be a bit easier now without him around anymore. How can you say that? He's been murdered. You're making it look like I wanted that to happen to him. Did you then? No! After everything he did to you. What? What do you know about that? Oh, a little. Nothing. You don't know a thing. And if there is anything, you save it for yourself. Or what? The same thing that happened to Fuller will happen to me? Get out. Psst. Mrs. Biber. Yes, what can I get you? Can you tell me anything about Carrie? She's supposed to have killed herself? Yeah. Carrie. She was a really sweet girl. Always ready to help. Always friendly. She wanted to open a kindergarten here. There's not much in the way of childcare around here. Parents have to take their kids for miles to find a place. She was such a lovely girl. She still had her whole life in front of her. I saw a photo of her in Fuller's shop window. She was really pretty. I don't know. Poor thing. 
How do you mean? Uh, it's not important. Too late anyway. A girl I know is being suspected of having killed Fulla. I'm sorry about that. Yes, she was lured into a trap. She has no motive. She also wasn't being blackmailed. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Was Fulla blackmailing anyone else? Did anyone else have a motive apart from you? Oh, you've got nerve. I wasn't being blackmailed. Listen, I'm sorry about what happened to your friend. But if she's not guilty, then she won't be held for long now, will she? And I don't know anything about blackmail. Huh. So you don't want to help me get an innocent girl out of jail? I... I can't. Sorry. So, uh, are 15 Ben Franklins enough of a motive for murder? What? The $1,500 you had to pay Fulla. Get out of here. You just can't... You don't... Have any evidence? Could be I do. It's about time the truth got shook out. I didn't murder Fuller. Where were you when it happened? So now you're a cop. Would you prefer it if I go to the cops on this? I was at home. Alone? With my husband. I believe you. That shiner you have there says it all. Dr. Newhouse from the hospital. Oh, excuse me. The health center. Excuse me, Dr. Newhouse. Hello, yes? What can you tell me about Mrs. Baiba? And do you know her husband? Oh, well... Now, a person shouldn't speak ill of others, but her husband, that... He's a very unpleasant fellow. He was a big deal in the football team at high school. And Mrs. Baiba married him young. Yes, I think she imagined her life turning out some other way. Like how? Now, she works hard in the diner. She probably does the work of about three people. But I don't think it makes a great deal of money. And her husband, well, uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. They certainly don't have a lot of money, just a lot of work. And no love. Uh-huh. So, uh, a crazy good-time guy like yourself can surely tell me where all the action is here in Biddeford. <laughs> oh, dear me, no. <laughs> you got me wrong there. I could perhaps give you a few tips on which are the most interesting evening courses at the community center. Uh, no thanks. I'll pass on that one. I thought you might. Hey, we do put on a disco for young folks every two weeks. But <laughs> I suspect you've rather grown out of all that, too. I don't think I was ever that age. Discos, bars, parties. I was never into that sort of thing. Your mother mentioned that. You were rather more of a loner, yes? I have no idea where she got that from. Oh, excuse me. I didn't intend to... So, to sum up then, in Biddeford, you're best off being over 50 or dead. Might just suit me. What? Be being over 50? Yeah, exactly. Do you know how my mother is? Or should I ask someone in the hospital? I've already seen your mother today, Darren. No change. And uh, I think we ought to take that as a good sign. Are there good medical reasons for thinking that? Or is that just wishful thinking? Uh, optimism never hurts. <laughs> so it's just wishful thinking, then. Darren. Thanks, Doc. Have you ever seen this guy? He was in the hospital yesterday. In the hospital? I don't think I saw him. Why did you ask the nursing sister? He was here in the diner, too. Huh. That's right. I think he was talking to Mrs. Baiba. Did you notice anything else? Yeah, afraid not. So how was old Fuller killed then? Oh, I, I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you anything. They're still investigating. What? You think I'd tell the press? I did used to work for him, and I'd like to know what happened. Well, okay then. 
he was stabbed. And more exactly? He was stabbed nearly a dozen times. Not a nice sight. Did he bleed to death? Not necessarily. Could have been shock. Could well have been that some vital organs were injured. Huh. So looks like Fuller had a pretty free choice of how he checked out. Somebody wanted to cover all the bases for him. Darren, you really shouldn't speak of the dead like that. I'm not interested in the dead. I'm interested in the murderer. As I understand it, there's also a department in the health center for the less mobile... a morgue. <laughs> yes. That's right, this is a small town. We doctors at the health center are also responsible for checking corpses. So don't you have to have special training for that? If there's even just the slightest sign of a crime, then we get an experienced pathologist over from Portland. So that means that Fuller still hasn't been looked at. Right now, we're waiting for the pathologist. We've only prepared him. Do the nurses sometimes stick their fingers in the deceased's personal effects? Outrageous! Of course not. These things are properly stored away in the morgue as they should be. Thank you. So, uh, are the cops in Biddeford any good? How do you mean that? Do you trust them to find the killer? I'm sure they'll do their best. Oh, right. We've never had a case like this before. Oh, so you don't reckon it's such a bad thing if they've got the wrong person, since they still have to practice? I'm sure that the captain will solve the case. Well, that's it for now, I guess. If you've got any more things you want to ask, then just come and find me. I should have guessed. The police have sealed the door. I've got to find another way. Crap. The back door is locked, too. I've got to think of something. How do I get into the house without breaking the seal? The window is open. Presumably to let in some fresh air. Or maybe it just doesn't close properly. Who knows? That's Fuller's office window. The window is barred. The bars seem pretty strong and are bricked into the wall. Yep. That could be my way into the house. I can get into the basement through the light well. I've just got to get rid of this grill first. It looks very heavy and it's rusted into the concrete. I'll tie the rope to the window grill and the basement grill. Pretty heavy. Hey, if it worked in ancient Egypt, it should work here. My private doorway to Fuller's Realm. B. 
beaten by it. An old clothes dummy. Oh, judging by the smell, it's been damp at some point. Now it's just moldering away. Fuller's secret door is behind this photographic screen, but it could cause some trouble with the cops if I bust it. There has to be some kind of... we got here? The US, uh, Hawaii, something illegible, and Europe. Fuller smeared half of it with his filthy paws. That's got it. Battered looking numeric pad with small metal buttons. I guess that you have to enter a code to open the door. Hi. Hello, Mr. Michaels. What can I do for you? How's my mother today? No change. Her vital signs are all okay, but she is still comatose like before. So, we can only wait. It looks that way. Has the guy who inquired about my mother been here again? No, at least not on my shift. And please, can you tell the other nurses that they should keep an eye out for this guy? The police are looking for him. I know. The police faxed through a photo fit picture. Good. You heard what happened to Fuller? Oh, yes. Beatrix told me. They brought him in here this morning, covered in blood. Did you know Fuller? Not personally. What do you mean by that? I'd heard of him. You... you... Okay, listen. I'll tell you. As a woman, it wasn't an especially good idea to have your picture taken by him. Why not? He was a creep, and was not supposed to be able to keep his hands to himself. That sort of thing gets around, of course. Thanks very much for the information. No problem. Excuse me. This area is only for staff. You're not allowed in there. Oh, uh, excuse me. I, I didn't know that. I've got to distract the nurse somehow. She won't let me in there. There's a delivery note for liquid soap. Yeah. 
I'm standing here in front of my mother who's lying in a coma, and all I can think of is her lying to me about her accident. Just what kind of a person am I? There are a few cables hanging down the side of the unit, mostly to the sensors attached to my mother. The machine only monitors my mom's vital functions, so it doesn't matter if I loosen a cable here. Perhaps the delivery note will be of use. I'll take it. Yes. Um, hello. Are you delivering something? Yes. <sighs> Delivery note. <laughs> Whatever. I'll be off then. Hey, not so fast. What you delivering then? Liquid soap. So, where is it? Huh? Where is the package? Oh, uh, what a klutz. I left it in the car. Man, unbelievable. In my day, I would have never gotten away with that kind of thing. Oh, no. Does that mean I'll never be able to become a security guy now? I'll get the box. An empty package. Looks like someone's unpacked their shipment here and left the packaging. Some people. Hey, Rosie. Hard at work, I see. What do you want? Hey, uh, do you know Eddie from the junk shop? Yeah, sure. I know pretty well everybody here. So what's going on with him? He's single. Was never married before either, as far as I know. But hey, who could put up with him for long anyway? Those never-ending war stories. Can you imagine that? Is he really blind? I never heard different. But I wouldn't put money on it either. He's a chiseler. Maybe he's got disability just so he can make himself a few bucks. Do you know this man? Has he got something to do with the Fuller murder? Of course. I can see it now. That's a real criminal face. You know him or not? Never seen him. Then not. Have you already heard what happened to Fuller? Hmm. Isn't that something? I know, right? At last. Something's happening here. A bloody murder in the middle of the night? A suspicious foreign lady? Who knows what's gonna come out of all this? Maybe the suspicious foreign woman is innocent and has been wrongly arrested. Oh yeah, and the killer is still on the loose and is gonna kill again. Oh yeah, maybe a, a souvenir shop employee. That's not funny. You shouldn't joke about that. What can you tell me about the hotel down the coast? The Wild Coast? Belongs to an old town family. Been there for about a hundred years. It's a well-run place. Doesn't do badly. Bit boring, though. No scandals? The owner doesn't get on too well with his son. He's hanging out in Portland. Some kind of musician. But exactly what? I don't know. And anything else? There's an illegal card game up there sometimes. The cops don't bother with it, though. Why'd they do that? How should I know? The chief probably plays with them. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Um, hello. Are you delivering something? Yes. Every note. Hmm. 
Whatever. The package? I've got it here. Okay. Can I go in now? No, you can't. Where's your pass? My what? Your visitor's pass? You have to get a visitor's pass back there. Oh, come on. What is this garbage? I just want to take my package to the mortuary. And you need a pass to do that. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You could say so. I'd think about that if I were you. The question is, has the job made him cynical and depressive? Or does he have this job because he's always been cynical? Excuse me, Dr. Newhouse. Hello, yes? What's that ID you're wearing there? It's from the hospital. Don't they know you're a doctor there? <laughs> they can't have that many staff. <laughs> I said the same thing to the admin people. <laughs> but Dick, the security guard, insists on it. He's, he's very <laughs> meticulous and apparently can't recognize faces. Can you tell me something about the security guy at the hospital? I find him kind of interesting. He used to be a police officer. He was... Uh... <laughs> there were a few problems. So, when he couldn't be a police officer anymore, he became a security guard. Where do you know him from? He was in the diner yesterday. Oh, all right. But strange as it may seem, I believe he lives for his job. He lives for that? Being a security guy. He takes his job very seriously. Sometimes too seriously. Hmm. Well, that's it for now, I guess. If you've got any more things you want to ask... Mrs. Biber? I'll be right there. Hey, um, can I get a pot of coffee? On its way. Hot, hot. Oh man, sorry. It was an accident. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Your thoughts are elsewhere. I'll give it here, Dr. Newhouse. I'll rinse out the stain. Thanks. No harm meant. No damage. I just gotta keep it cool. Now that's what I call a serious coffee stain. And the ID badge is still pinned to the lab coat. So now I've been Um, hello. 
Are you delivering something? Yes. <sighs> delivering? Hmm. Well, the packet? I've got it here. Okay. Can I go in now? I, uh, I've got a pack. All right, then. You could go in. A syringe. Quite a size. I guess any remaining fluids are sucked up with that. I said. Huh. Six clipboards in total. Let's see. There are lists of the personal belongings each dead person had on them. But there are no names. There's 394 written on the first one. I guess the numbers on the lists here relate to the numbers on the boxes. That means if I can work out which of these lists belong to Fuller, then I know which box his stuff is in. Number 412. Wallet, keys, Polaroid photo. That could be Fuller. Oh, wait a minute. A wedding ring. Fuller was never married, so it's not 412. Number 442. Driver's license, photos, small change, a pacifier, baby powder, definitely not fuller. Number 448, wallet, driver's license, credit card, keys, bills, I wouldn't rule that out as being fuller's, but I'm not certain. Boxes, they appear to be airtight. There's a number stuck to every box. I think the personal effects of the dead people are stored in them. I've got no idea which box is Fuller's. I can hardly search through all these boxes in the hope of finding it. The security guy outside's gonna start wondering where I am at some point. I've got no idea which... Number 399. Knife, torch, ski mask, skeleton keys, small change, plastic bag. Unless Fuller was about to set off on a secret thieving trip when he was murdered, then that's not his. Number 433. Credit cards, earrings, anklet. Mm, no, not Fuller's. Number 394. Hairbrush, lipstick, car keys, mirror. That's hardly going to be the contents of Fuller's pockets. Number 400, that's the only box. Fuller's box is number 448. But where is it? Either they assume that Biddeford's population will reach 50,000, well, the number of cold drawers is quite over the top. Half the town would have to have a collective heart attack. Ugh, not a pretty sight. Fuller's body's peppered with stab wounds. They've undressed him. I won't find any clues here. Hmm. Sick there, are I guess that means that's Fuller's box. Huh. Fuller's keys. Those could be useful. Hey, and here's his wallet driver's license, a few dollars, credit card, a few bills. But no secret numbers or anything like that. I think I'll take the keys. The wallet and the rest of that stuff is of no use to me. A cheapo old-time cuckoo clock. A testament to Fuller's fine taste for stylish interior decoration. Hey, there's a small opening. I could easily fit my finger in there. 
that. Let's see what happens when I turn the key. Okay. So, I've wound up the clock. Now I'm pushing the key in. Oops, it clicked. It sounds like it adjusted something inside the clock. What the? Uh, what's this then? This box was hidden in the clock. Come on, I just need a little tip for the damn combination. Huh, four negatives. Hey, two, four, eight, two. The rows produce digital figures when arranged in the right order. I'm certain that's the code for the secret door. The negatives were Fuller's emergency memory aid. Okay, good. I don't understand it. The code has to be right. At least it sounded like it was. Hmm. Something else can't be right. When you stand here, it feels like... Um, like... like what? Something like when you, when you see in the dock and he has you stand on a set of mechanical weighing scales. Everything slides slightly back and forth. The floor gives a little as you stand on it. Could it really be a set of scales? Would that fit in with a secret door? Aha, I knew it. 
if it really is a kind of scale, then it could measure Fuller's weight while he tapped in the secret number into this pad, and the door would only open when the two matched. Pretty well thought through, for sure. Um, for me, there's the problem that I have no idea how heavy Fuller is. I've got to find that out if I want to make progress here. A soda machine chucks out various kinds of sugared water. A bottle of soda. Great. I've forgotten something else. <laughs> I've drawn a little of the laxative into the syringe. I should first divert the security guy's attention. All the racket's gonna be quite suspicious. Not here. The security guy is sitting direct. Hey! I've forgotten. <clears throat> nice. That's the laxative in the soda bottle. Hey boss, you want a soda? What do you want for it? Nothing. You just gonna give me a soda, as a friendly gesture. Exactly. That's very... nice. Perhaps you could do me another favor. Can you keep watch here for a minute? I'll be right back, but real quick. I thought you couldn't leave your post. It's an emergency. I'll be back in a minute. Wait here. Okay, no problem. What was that about? Strange. Oh well, he's gone. All right, I can work out Fuller's and the buyer's weight together. That way... Three hundred and forty-eight pounds. The only question is, how much of that is buyer, and how much is fuller? Let's see... The buyer weighs about 53 pounds. 348 for Fuller with the buyer, minus 53 for the buyer makes 295 pounds. That's Fuller's weight, and that's what I gotta put on the scales. Perhaps a bit more. He wasn't wearing any clothes and had lost a lot of blood after all. I weigh nearly 198 pounds with clothes on. So I just need around another 99 pounds on the scale with me. I'm sure I can find something in the basement. Don't move! What the? Look, I didn't want to... What are you doing? Trying to poison me, huh? That ain't gonna work on me. Me? <laughs> poison you? What makes you think that... No one has ever offered me a drink. And someone like you, of all people, bring me a soda. Yeah, well, I thought you were thirsty. Yeah, sure, junkie. You want to steal medication, huh? Or, or equipment to make some money, don't you? That's crazy. I, I was... 
The soda's poison, right? It's in the lab right now. And if it turns out you're trying to poison me... <laughs> yeah, well... Poisoned... You going to jail for this, you... you terrorist! And you were missing your old boss and wanted to say goodbye to him. Something like that. Don't give me that crap. Breaking and entering, larceny, we can lock you up for that. Breaking and entering and larceny. <laughs> According to the security guy, I'm a seriously dangerous terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> he caught you snooping around and that's bad enough. I understand that you want to help your girlfriend, but this kind of thing doesn't really help. When this gets out, and Dick's gonna make sure that everyone in town knows about his heroic act by tomorrow morning. Then it's gonna look like you wanted to get rid of evidence, or something like that. Can I go now? Darren, I'm not against you, but keep your nose out of this. If we catch you snooping around again, you're gonna end up in the can, capiche? Yeah, capiche. Now get out of here. I've gotta reassure Dick and... make it clear to him the boy's harmless. and I'm gonna continue where I left off, at Fuller's secret door. I don't think that'll do anything. I'm not heavy enough. Okay, I'm missing about 90 pounds of additional weight. That shouldn't be a problem. Along with my weight, another few pounds ought to do it. I reckon that'll be exactly enough. It might work now. That's it! At last. Now that the door's open, I'll get this junk out of the way. Somewhere there's gotta be... Ah, here. The bed's got a metal frame and a worn mattress. It's stained and moldy. No sheet, no pillow, just this grubby blanket. I don't want to know what went on here. I'm just afraid that I already do. Lots of little bottles of knockout drops. That's... Oh, God. I picked them up. Oh, fullest package, it clinked. There are these shiny golden balls on the bedposts. Now, that must be brass. works. The ball simply plugged into the tube of the bedpost. Weird. That curtain looks like Fuller stole it from his mother. Old-fashioned, but in better shape than everything else here. What have we got here? A metal plate has been built into the wall. In the middle of the plate is a hexagonal recess. The metal locker looks very old. Perhaps it's from a school or a sports club. Something's happened. <sighs> it's open, but I can't get excited about it. I don't want to see what's on these photos. 
Oh, there's only Mrs. Biber in these pictures. But there could be other pictures of other women. And therefore lots of people with a motive. That, along with the blackmail letter, should easily convince the police. Fuller was a blackmailer. And worse. There must have been dozens of people who wanted him dead. Dozens of people with a motive. Unlike Angelina. I'll get her out of jail with this. Not nice. And every time she goes out, Mrs. Biber has to reckon unbelievable how she must have hated him. But then her fear of everything being made public must have been even more so. Hmm. That's really interesting. It's repulsive. A and a damn good motive, right? Indeed. But it doesn't mean that the Bibus have anything to do with the murder. Of course not. Look, I guess your people would find even more in Fuller's secret room. Then you'll have plenty of suspects, all with good motives. I've already sent some people over there. But all of this doesn't prove that it wasn't Miss Morgan. But she had no motive! Yes, she did. Th th that's him! That's the guy that followed me! Nice that you came, Mr... Reginald Boris is my name, Captain. I'm a private detective from England. I'm sure I can contribute a few things that will clear up this case quite considerably. That's what we like to hear. We have a few questions for you as it happens. For example, why you lured Angelina into a trap? Mr. Michaels. The important question is surely why. Why did Miss Morgan murder the photographer Fuller? Well, quite simple. She was also photographed by him. As you can see, not quite as revealing as the others, but I haven't got all of the photos. I'm sure your people will find other pictures that put it beyond all doubt. What the? Th th those are mine! I shot those pictures of Angelina yesterday afternoon! All right, calm down. What's going on here? You'd better ask him! He must have stolen these pictures from Angelina's hotel room. These pictures have got nothing to do with it. It's the same photo paper as the other ones. And I got them from Fuller. He said he had lots more. Oh, man. Lies! Well, we'll see about that. Darren, go and get some fresh air. Calm yourself down. Mr. Boris, come with me, please. There are a few things we need to discuss. Why, certainly. And Angelina? She stays where she is, until we've cleared up this mess. But you... <sighs> we'll get in touch when we need your help. Good day. <gasps> this can't be for real. You know... I believe you. You were right about Fuller, and there's something not quite right with this Detective Boris. Then go in there, a arrest him, and release Miss Morgan already. It's not that simple. But it'll all become clear. In a few days, everything will be cleared up. Until then, you should just wait. And go visit your mother. Wait, a few days? A and give this asshole time to get new evidence? Yeah, right. Next thing you know, he'll he'll frame her for the Kennedy assassination. I'm gonna find out what game he's playing. Good. But be careful. The end doesn't justify the means. You've already broken into Fuller's house. If you get caught doing something like that, you'll get it for real. Then you'd better stay away from me. He can only have gotten the pictures from Angelina's hotel room. I should have a look around there, regardless of what the police think. Cat lost, you damn critters! Get off my veranda! The seagulls seem to like the veranda just as much as the hotel owner does.
Excuse me. Yes, please? Do you know that Angelina's been arrested? I... <laughs> can't tell you anything about that. But you do know. Look, Darren, this is a family hotel. I understand. Can I have a quick look around in Miss Morgan's room? Absolutely not. Even if I were to let something slip out to the press? I'm not going to be blackmailed. And anyway, the newspaper belongs to my brother-in-law. Hmm. Nice for you. I saw the card and the flowers that you sent my mother. Oh, well, that was a given. As I hear it, isn't she any better? Seems there's not much kept private round here. Well, my wife is a friend of the doctor's wife. After all, one worries about people, doesn't he? Would you let me know then when my mother's condition starts to improve? Sorry? Was this guy here again yesterday? You mean the one who was asking about Miss Morgan? Yes, I saw him the one time through the window. He was headed towards town. Where was he coming from? I can't tell you exactly. Somewhere from around the beach, I'd say. Well, can you keep your eyes peeled? I believe he's caught up in all this. In the murder? For sure. He was following Angela... Uh, Miss Morgan, and now he's framed her for the murder. <laughs> what are things coming to? What kind of folks are running around in our lovely little Biddeford these days? What do you reckon? Who do you think murdered Fuller? Well, the cops already have a suspect. That's crazy. It wasn't her. I hope so, too. And I also hope they keep it quiet about where she was staying. And that's all you're worried about? Listen here. My whole family's welfare depends on this hotel. You know what my daughter's tuition fees in Switzerland cost? There's an innocent girl sitting in jail. That interests me more than your daughter's college fees. Forgive me, you're right. But if Miss Morgan is innocent, which is what we all assume, then the truth will soon come to light. Oh, I'll bring it to light, all right. Whatever it costs. You got a seagull problem here? <laughs> I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> they kind of come with the coast. <laughs> it's just, it would be nice if they kept away. In my opinion, they ought to be out on the ocean or on rocks on the coast, <laughs> but not on my veranda. And they've lost their fear of humans. And the hotel guests are always feeding them, especially with bits of fish. And then, at some point, the guests leave, and I'm left with a flock of seagulls on my veranda. They wreck the cushions, and, oh, uh, well... They crap on your tables? Well, I wouldn't have put it like that myself, but... yes. The weather isn't going to be suiting to your guests. Oh, yeah, well, there's not much going on anyway. The change in the weather was already announced, and to be honest, Right now, I'm quite happy there's not so many guests in the hotel. You know why. Not with the... Uh, incident. Have the cops sealed off Miss Morgan's room? They were here first thing this morning. Got me out of bed, they did. I was worried that they'd pull the whole room apart. Took a whole lot of photos and fingerprints. <laughs> you know, like in a movie. But they didn't. The captain had a look round the room, made a few notes, and told me that nothing should be touched. But after ten minutes, he was off again, without, without taking anything with him. So are they coming back again? I, I don't know. I didn't get the feeling that the captain was looking for anything in particular. He just wanted to take a look around. So there could definitely still be clues hidden in the room. I need to be able to get a look around in there. And I'll be a lot more thorough than the captain. I'll press a little around here.
चाचा Got it. The key for room number 5. What's this then? I don't believe there's no cable on it. It must have a little transmitter, but such a tiny transmitter can't have much of a range. Hmm. Huh. That means there has to be an amplifier or a more powerful transmitter around here. A ventilation shaft could be a good hiding place for a radio set. I bet the hole leads right up to the roof. I knew it. A radio set. The bug only needs to transmit a few yards and then this powerful set amplifies the signal and sends it on to wherever. Where have you come from? What do you think you're doing? I uh You can't just march through the rooms. This is a discreet, familial hotel. Where? Where is the key for room 5? Miss Morgan's room. You've got it. I uh... Give it here immediately. Don't let the police hear about this. Heaven's sake. I now get out. I never want to see you here again. If you just don't. Man, was he upset or what? doesn't matter i've got everything i wanted and i don't need to go back into the hotel again um what's with my slide projector don't worry i've got it here is it broken no but old and battered as ever what do you need the projector for anyway you're blind you just look after your own junk Do you know this man? You want to play me for a sucker? Oh, uh, sorry. Have you heard what happened to Fuller? Sure. The police was here. Wanted to know if I heard anything. Did you? I got ears like a lynx, but it was raining. When the rain falls on that tin roof out my window, I can't hear nothing else. The police are looking for a man called Reginald Boris. He was hiding in a side street next to your shop. Did you notice anything? If I noticed a little punk like that, I'd have given him an earful. That I can believe. The police have arrested an innocent woman. It happens. I'm going to prove that she's innocent. Is she that pretty? She's damn pretty. <laughs> but but that's not why I'm doing it. Whatever. You would have helped a 60-year-old wrinkly bitty in just the same way. But it don't matter in the end. The strong got to help the weak. It's your duty to get her out of there. Will you help me if I can? You're an expert on radio equipment, right? Can you tell me what this is? Who the hell? Darren. Can you help me or not? It's it's important. Hmm. Well, that's a plain old transmitter. Cheap Asian trash. I found that thing in a ventilation shaft in a young woman's hotel room. What kind of range does this thing have? Eh. Uh, not far. If it's used in a room a, a couple of miles at best. And it's not possible to find out where the receiver is, right? Ah, that doesn't help at all. Damn. I know all the hams in the area. 
and none of them would hide that kind of thing in a ladies' room. But? But I intercepted some strange Morse code last night. Long wave, just after 1800 hours. Someone knew. He said something about a girl who is now safe. He also said he'd be back in touch today at 1800 hours. That could have been Reginald Boris. A foreigner? Uh, yes, and apart from that, perhaps old fellow's murderer, and someone who wants to frame an innocent party. And you want to stop that? Well, maybe there's a spark of decency in you yet. Can we track down Reginald if he transmits again at 1800 hours? Well, you bet. With directional antennas. I got one here. We'll have to build another one. Uh, we'll, we'll get his bearings from two different points, and then bang! We got him. What do you need for it? Oh, well, let me think. I've got a radio here. We can use that. I need a metal tube, a copper wire, at least a meter, and you'll need headphones and a compass to get the bearings right. You bring me that stuff, and I'll build you the direction finder. And hurry! There ain't much time till 1800. Uh, 1800 hours. That's 6 p.m., right? Oh, my God. A pair of wire cutters for cutting cable. I'd like to buy these wire cutters. Dollar fifty. Because it's you. All right. I think I can afford that. That'll be just right for the directional transmitter. All right, then. There's no choice. I need the copper wire. I'll cut into the plastic insulation and pull it back carefully. And now, I have a real nice piece of copper wire. I'll just borrow it. All right, then. I need the compass. I'll have to sacrifice the telescope. That goes out to Biddeford's main school. 